And just so everybody knows, while I've been working on one base, I've also been making this one a lot more compact. I actually figured out that due to the wooden conductive cable issue, uh, I figured out that you can just use your steam engines into a network of pipes. So I've got uh, the ones that need water here, the carpenter and the fermenter. Not that I need hummus that much, but I mean, hey, it's it's automated hummus. I, that's pretty much the only reason why the carpenter is working so well because I don't need to worry about a thing. I've got the squeezer going for seed oil. I've got the fermenter going for biomass. I've got the centrifuge, centrifuging. It's great. I know, me making up verbs all over the place. <sighs> and here's what it looks like from up top. Yep, I've got my two regular hobbyist steam engines next to the other ones. I've got the Omni Wrench, which was extremely useful to make if you need to know that recipe. It's easy it works with all machines you just click it and they end up facing exactly the right direction so what I'm gonna do now is I need to build something uh, oh no I only need one of these something to make the pulverizer and powered furnace combo just go smoothly that's all I need right now I mean it's all nice and automated but I could make it go slightly smoother so we might as well do that We'll use our crafting bench here, simply because this crafting bench, the arcane one, works just like the automatic one, where the things you put in it, if I leave, will simply stay inside. So I'm going to need four iron ingots and one chest, and then I will have created a hopper. Now I know in the next version of Minecraft there's probably going to be an actual hopper, but there's one in this one, and it doesn't work the same at all. I'm going to need one more iron ingot. I miscounted. Whatever. Anyway, regardless of how that hopper works, I'll show you how this one works. It, uh, it does pretty much the same thing as the one that Vanilla Minecraft is going to have in a while. You just plunk it on top of the pulverizer. Yeah, uh, and then you can just chuck things into it, and they will gradually be dropped into the pulverizer for me. So... The only thing I have left is tin ore to pulverize, unless I really, really want to pulverize more cobblestone. What's in the pulverizer right now? Nothing. But I need to tell it, somehow, that the top has become blue. Yeah, there we- oh. No, no, no! Ah, oh, man, I didn't catch it in time. So now that it knows that that's an input, the hopper will drop everything that's put into it straight in there which goes straight into the power furnace which goes straight into this chest so that's really simple i got the rainwater tank hooked up to the pump network just so that no matter what happens it'll fill up the water even if the pump is a little bit slow uh that's completely unnecessary of course the the only issue here is that uh well if i powered the rainwater tank i could turn it into a water bottler but Again, that's, that's kind of pointless. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this base setup now. In fact, let's go grab the cobble from this chest, because there's no reason for this chest to have cobble in it. Which one was that? There it is. All right, so if you're wondering now, Flip, what in goodness sakes name are you going to build next? Well, I got a couple of ideas. There's one thing that I'm really looking into as far as industrial craft goes, and that is the geothermal generator which takes lava as you may or may not be aware and there's two ways to really get infinite lava near infinite lava anyway these are all working quite nicely aren't they yeah oh i'm gonna need to go get some more honeycombs all right so here's the thing one of them which is simply put a pump into the nether and use special pipes to transport the lava from the nether to the overworld will actually cause a lot of server lag and possibly totally crash. Uh, multiplayer. This isn't multiplayer, this is a single quest, but I don't like the idea of doing irreversible environmental damage by draining the lava lakes of the nether. I know, it doesn't matter that much, but I'd, I'd like to avoid that if possible. So the other idea that I have, obviously, is something called the Magma Crucible, and why is this not uh, finishing? It's getting power. It's probably only getting a little bit of power, though, because even though I have four engines up top, all running on coal coke, uh, it's being distributed between one, two, three, four, five, 
like seven machines right now so it's it's not very efficient but on the plus side i do have them all running i i never was able to run them all at the same time before another thing i need to build right now let's see how to do that is a chunk loader so if i type in chunk it should come up in our list on the right hand side eventually yeah okay uh what do, what do we have here chunk loader what do you do Enchantment table, Ender Pearl, and Gold. Wow. Well, it's been a while since I needed to build an enchantment table, so let's do that. Now, I don't really know what the chunk loader does, to be honest. My best guess is that it'll keep my base loaded while I'm off at the other base. And you're thinking, why is that important? Well, honestly, it might not be. But... What it will ensure is that, basically, what the heck's that? You can make obsidian sticks. Why would I make obsidian sticks? Unless it has to do with train craft and making a train. Because I could, I've been using all the creosote oil to turn into, yeah, rails and... This base and the other base, I mean, I could either walk through a portal or take a train 4,000 blocks. What do you think I'm going to do first, really? It's hilarious. Okay, uh, I need a book to finish off the enchantment table, and then I should be able to make a chunk loader. I don't know how this thing works. It might be able to tell me after I make it, I'm hoping. Okay, let's do this. So, enchantment table, ender pearl, and all this gold will make a chunk loader. Okay, so where do I want to put this? Because I kind of want it to be in range of the tree farm. If that keeps going year-round, I'll be happy. However, how big is a chunk? Maybe the important thing is that all these pipes are running. Right? I mean, it'll ensure that everything here continues like... The centrifuge, squeezer, fermenter. I don't know what to do with the biomass cans yet. I could make a biogas engine, probably. I mean, the hummus maker, the... <sighs> the candlestick maker. Okay, this is a good question. Where do I want to put this sucker? Pulverizer's doing its... Th powered furnace is now full of gravel. No wonder it's not running. Hmm. I'm very curious... Uh, I might want to put it here, though, just in case. I mean, the tree farm always runs out of, well, stuff when I'm not there anyway. So we might as well place the chunk loader down here with the machines. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay. Yes, please show me your lasers. Circle, square, line X, line Z, square. God, I don't know how that works, but this will show me how big of a radius this chunk loader makes. All right, that's cool. So if I leave my base, obviously. Oh, wow. Okay, so the chunk loader is loading this chunk here. This massive square that is my house, and it stops... Okay, so it's not all that big. Huh. Hmm. Huh. I mean, it'll encapture everything in the base. So if I throw things in the infernal furnace, that'll work forever. All the machines will work forever. And maybe this will mean smoother transitions when I go through my portals. In fact, maybe I should put a chunk loader in the other base, too, just to make sure that thing works. Because I, I th I'm thinking about moving all my industrial stuff into the second base. Just because it just feels wrong to have it here. I mean, sometimes in Minecraft you have bad ideas. Right? This is, this is kind of cool. Should I just leave the lasers on all the time? Because here's my second base, right? And it looks pretty cool. I was practicing with the emerald saw, just cutting blocks into tinier blocks. So that's why that's like that. And I've got some actually pretty designs, whatever those are for. <laughs> But, one thing I did do, is I hollowed out the interior of this and used the rest of my wand of equal trade 
to make this all into basalt cobblestone. Got my pump set up for whenever I put some machines down here, but I think I still need to figure out what the industrial craft ones do before I start hooking them up to nothingness. So this is where I'm probably going to put those, and does it help to walk through this portal if this chunk is already, you know, knowingly loaded? No, I'm still getting trapped in the ground. That's horrible. Whoops. Let's go back through, and there, uh, here I am. Hmm. Maybe I should, like, build three trunk chunk loaders and just put them all around. One by the forest, one by the other thing. How does this thing work, anyway? I can't, uh, I can't tell the radius to go out, like, huge, can I? Like, to en encapture the, the tree farm? Can I? Show lasers in the square radius. Oh boy, yeah, this is big. Okay, one minute. Say I took out the chunk loader. Okay, here's the chunk loader. I'm just going to pick it up, bring it with me. Now, what I want to do is somehow make it so that my base is in the chunk loader at the same time that the tree farm is. Because if those two things are working at once, it'll just be better for everything. And I'd save on having to build a second one. Of course, the radius for that would be massive, because my stuff is there, the tree farm is there. It's not going to work. I mean, at the very least, what I could do is put it over here so my bees are working even when I'm not here. That wouldn't be so bad. So let's say I put the chunk loader here. And I said, do it in a five radius... Please show me your magic, chunk loader. Are you gonna... Okay, so the lasers are telling me that right now, I've got an area that... Mm, does it actually capture the tree farm? Yeah! But is it capturing this? No. No, it's not. Hmm, of course, I could lessen the range and thusly make sure that my base is still in the laser. This is going to make sure my automatic, my automatic farm is still in there. Okay, let's lessen the radius just to make sure that it's not going to, like, remove things. So hide the lasers, please. Or, actually show them. Okay. So. If I'm correct, this means that this chunk is always going to be loaded. So, everything that's going on underneath the base, the automatic uh, wheat farm is going to be loaded, as well as all my bees, whenever I'm doing bees. So, that's going to work very nicely. Hmm. So, wherever I am, these chunks will stay loaded. Excellent! So that's one more item from uh, the Feed the Beast mod pack that might really come in handy when it comes to single player. Right now on Single Quest, it's Ridiculous Invention Edition. Yeah, <laughs> So I built myself an industrial centrifuge, only to realize that the recipe for titanium dust has changed. Thankfully, I'll just press the U button while I'm highlighted on Bauxite, and it will tell us exactly what we're supposed to do with bauxite in order to get titanium. Ah, here you do. Here it is. Bauxite dust. Eight empty cells in the industrial electrolyzer. You need, it will create compressed air, hydrogen, tiny piles of titanium, and eight aluminium. So, with your tiny piles of titanium dust, what you would then probably be able to do is craft that into titanium dust and then smelt it into ingots, I am guessing? Yeah, into one single titanium dust. That's a lot of bauxite I'll need to find, because I've only got 24. I mean, even when you macerate it, you get four a piece, so it's pretty rough. So I need the industrial electrolyzer. So to make the industrial electrolyzer, I need to make two more advanced circuits, and as for the magnetizer, this was the recipe, and the extractor i did that before that wasn't difficult and i'm about to make the electrolyzer which is just electronic circuits some empty cells and some more copper cables 
All right, so let's go grab the materials, because you know what? I've been off screen in a lot of this stuff, just because I didn't know where I was going or if it would get anywhere. And finally, this this has been a massive use of those dreaded, dreaded refined iron ingots that I never really knew what I was doing with. I made a lot of them at first, and they all turned into machine blocks. I still don't know what I'm going to use the steel for, to be honest. Okay, so, wait, 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 I'm doing this backwards. First of all, I need to make a machine block. That's pretty obvious, if I'm going to make an electrolyzer. It took this, and then it took four copper cables, electronic circuit, and was it two refined iron, was it? No, it wasn't. It was something else. Oh, my God. All right, one minute. The electrolyzer needs... To... Oh, empty cells. Right, that's right. Okay. I've got some empty cells up here, too. Ah, that's one reason why I'm starting to prefer the other base. Even though it doesn't have anything in it, I don't need to jump back and forth all the time. And now I've got all these leftover iron fences that I don't know what to do with. But you know what? If they were in the recipe of the magnetizer, they're probably going to be in the recipe of something else. That's why I've got my mixed alloy ingots ready to be compressed. Some... Wait a minute. Empty cell. Empty cell. Electronic circuit. Machine block. Copper cable. Why is this not producing anything? One sec. Okay. The electrolyzer. Four copper cables. Electronic circuit, machine block, two empty cells, copper, 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 copper. Why is this not doing it? 30237, right? It's not, uh, 30237, yeah. Oh, wait, is it like this? There we go. Okay, good, the electrolyzer. Okay, then we are one step away from making the industrial, uh, what is it I'm doing again? The industrial electrolyzer, right. Okay, so the last thing I need to make the industrial electrolyzer so that I can actually get titanium is, yep, two more advanced circuits. Now, regular circuits are not that difficult. It's just it's just an extra annoying step they threw in that actually makes it so lapis is valuable, which is funny because lapis was never valuable. But now Two pieces of it are necessary in every single advanced machine, pretty much, since the circuits are, well, basically part of every advanced machine I've seen so far. I could be wrong. Oh my goodness. And I've been doing this all legit, too, so this is a lot of materials. Don't get me wrong. Oh, darn it, I miscounted again. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there'll be something that I need the industrial centrifuge for. I've already noticed that you get some very interesting results from it, uh, according to the recipes page. If you say, uh, insert some lapis lazuli or a stack of redstone. But I don't know what to do with them in particular. I mean, it sounds good to me. Okay, so... One more advanced circuit for us. Presto changeo. And now we can go make the industrial electrolyzer. Which I'm still going to need more bauxite for, but I'm thinking the quarry is probably done, and I can go quarry something else up, and then eventually, eventually I'll be able to put it together. Okay, so the industrial electrolyzer. Wow. Wow. And I don't even know how this thing works, so let's put it down next to the centrifuge. Yes. Yes, this interfuge... Wow, okay. This interface doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. No, it does not, but if I put in some bauxite dust... Uh, it probably wants empty cells. I've also got water capsules, if it wants that. I don't know. Empty cells? You know what? It's not being powered. That's probably it. Every machine absolutely needs power. I. If it's not one thing, it's another. And if it doesn't need the power, I don't know what it needs. That's the crazy thing. If I'm wrong... Okay, the bat box is still doing good. I just need to shift-click with a cable, and it will automatically attach it, pretty much. So... Pull that out like this, 
and attach it to the yeah, ceiling. Come on. There. Okay. Insufficient energy line. Really? So it needs high voltage? Is that the problem? My machines aren't powerful enough. I'm just using a generator right now. Okay, so assuming that I need super power, well, I suppose that's what this machine was invented for, wasn't it? <laughs> the geothermal thingamajig. Insufficient energy line. Yeah, I know. And you've already eaten up some energy cells. So, geothermal, what the hell is called, m maneuver. Lava cells. We're going to pump you in there. Ooh, wow, it takes a lot of lava cells, doesn't it? Zoom! Okay. Whew. Geothermal generator. How much power is this thing doing? Still insufficient energy line. Really? There's a... You've got the generator attached to you. Have I... Okay, one minute. Why is it not working? I've been trying to figure out how to get to titanium mingots. So, in a moment, I'm going to show you the correct formula. Alright, guys. So, it turns out that the way to make titanium ingots is here in the industrial electrolyzer. You need a certain amount of bauxite dust. I believe it's 24. So, when you grind up bauxite, you get 4 per dust. So, whatever. You need 12 of that. I had to search around a long time. I still haven't found any more of it. So where it actually comes from, I don't know. Somewhere in the ground. But you only get two tiny piles of titanium dust for every 24. You get these other things too. I don't know why you'd want hydrogen cells, compressed air, and aluminum. So the issue is it's going to be a lot more... Uh, mining to try and find bauxite to put in the electrolyzer to get the titanium because the drill the mining drill it takes an advanced circuit and then two titanium ingots to make that and you know what i'm lucky i'm lucky because to make a quarry takes a diamond drill now greg tech your recipes are impossible <laughs> kind of it turns out that to make the industrial electrolyzer work you need some empty cells in it, yeah, but more importantly, it needs 120 EU per tick, I believe, which is exactly what the MFE outputs. So to power your MFE, what I ended up doing was I just hooked up the magma, no, the geothermal generator and the outputs of the bat boxes to the MFE directly, and then I just left and did a whole bunch of stuff. Thank goodness the chunk loader was working perfectly for that while the generator was powering both the bat boxes where you know i probably should have just hooked the generator into this thing too but it doesn't matter the, the important thing is uh, it it took all the mfe pretty much to power the industrial electrolyzer and after that i powered it again glass fiber cables might be expensive but you get eight for every like one diamond you throw in there and honestly, I guess they are the best kind of cable. I don't know if you lose energy for HV or not. But there are certain cables where you do lose energy per cable it has to travel through. And that is not the case with glass fiber, I think. Again, I'm not an expert here playing Minecraft. And the mine crack, feed the beast. The next thing I guess I'm going to need to do is take all this coal dust and macerate it and turn it into something else. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, honestly. It's tricky. I know you can turn it into raw carbon, carbon fiber and then compress this into carbon plates, as you can see. Why you would want to do this? I'm not totally sure. I think it's in a couple of recipes. Most notably, the ones for solar panels. Okay, actually, let's figure that out. Solar panels is the next thing I want to figure out how to how to make. Oh, silicon plates. Well, to make a silicon plate, you need silicon. 
He needs silicon cells in the industrial blast furnace. Well, where do you get silicon cells? Liquid registry. No, sometimes it doesn't explain in this, and then I need to go watch people's videos. So a big shout out to Dire Wolf for his Let's Play series explaining his own mod pack. Like that explains some things, like why the chunk loader is important, and uh, electric cables make my life a lot easier and not have to have generators attached to every single machine. Uh, oh, and I found it out on my own. Uh, I don't know if they're around here, but uh, yeah, they are. Okay. Sulfur torches are blue, and they, well, they light up the same amount, but they're pretty. Look at that. That's amazing. How you get sulfur? All you do is cook gunpowder. So if you got a lot of that laying around, uh, why not just use it for torch material? It's it's lovely. It's lovely. All right. Uh, the next thing is... Who else? There were some other people that really their videos really helped me out anyway the people that i wanted to thank were hypnotized for well getting me started on really figuring out how the liquid electrolyzer works even though he was a bit out of date when it came to changes hey it's something we all got to work with uh what was the other guy's name knight 97m something like that yeah Thank you for actually explaining that it takes an MFE to power this thing. You didn't really do it in your video, but in your comments, a lot of people were having the same problem as me, and that was exactly the answer I needed. At the same time, I gotta say thank you to Ketzel, I think that's his name, for all of his various block spotlights that I've seen while I'm searching around the wiki pages. Honestly, if you guys are playing the same pack as me, or different Feed the Beast packs, you really do need to look up all the information you need, and these kinds of people are the perfect ones to go to. Ow. <laughs> ah. Dragon Egg Tower certainly does look pretty cool over there. Alright, well, thanks for watching Single Quest, guys, and I will see you all next time.